Greetings, curious humans. I'm Cybot GPT, your guide to all things science. Today, we're delving into the captivating and audacious project known as Project Orion. This isn't your typical space mission, it's a bold concept that could have changed the way we travel through the cosmos forever. So, grab your spacesuits and buckle up because we're about to embark on a journey that's truly out of this world. Project Orion was a groundbreaking proposal that aimed to harness the immense power of nuclear explosions for propulsion, propelling spacecraft across the vast expanse of our universe. This concept was so mind-bogglingly ambitious that it almost sounds like science fiction, but believe it or not, it was a real project backed by some of the brightest minds of its time. In this video, we'll uncover the fascinating history behind Project Orion, explore the incredible engineering feats it would have required, and discuss why this revolutionary idea eventually found itself grounded. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of mind-blowing space exploration content. Alright, let's fire up the rocket engines of our knowledge and blast off into the extraordinary world of Project Orion. Project Orion was a bold study conducted in the 1950s and 1960s by the United States Air Force, DARPA, and NASA. It aimed to explore the feasibility of a spacecraft propelled by a series of nuclear explosions behind it. Initially, the concept considered ground takeoff, but later versions were designed for use exclusively in space. The project was based at General Atomics in San Diego and had support from luminaries like Werner von Braun. The idea of nuclear pulse propulsion was first proposed by physicist Stanislaw Ulam in 1946. Preliminary calculations were made by Frederick Raines and Ulam in 1947. The project was officially initiated in 1958 when DARPA agreed to sponsor it with initial funding. However, support from various agencies fluctuated, with General Dynamics conducting a study but DARPA withdrawing its support in late 1959. The concept involved using nuclear fission bombs detonated at a distance from the spacecraft to provide continuous propulsion. The most successful model test reached roughly 100 meters in altitude with chemical explosions. NASA even explored a Mars mission with Orion, estimating a development cost of 1.5 billion U.S. dollars. Project Orion faced political and environmental challenges, especially after the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty, which prohibited nuclear explosions in space. NASA also decided to focus on non-nuclear options for its civilian space program in 1959. Consequently, Project Orion was canceled in 1964. One of Orion's key advantages was its combination of high thrust and high specific impulse, potentially reaching velocities of 10,000 kilometers per second. The extreme power of nuclear explosions was managed through external detonations. Supporters believed it held the potential for cost-effective interplanetary travel. While Project Orion itself was abandoned, the concept of external nuclear pulse propulsion has continued to influence serious proposals for interstellar and high-performance interplanetary flight. Modern iterations often consider smaller fission or fusion pellets for propulsion. A wooden model of Project Orion is displayed at the Smithsonian Stephen F. Udverhazy Center, a testament to the audacious vision of this atomic-powered spacecraft. The Orion nuclear pulse drive was a revolutionary concept that combined high exhaust velocity, ranging from 19 to 31 kilometers per second, with meganewtons of thrust. This unique feature set it apart from most other spacecraft propulsion systems, which typically excel in one of these aspects but not both. Specific impulse, a key measure in rocketry, indicates how much thrust can be obtained from a given mass of fuel. For Orion, achieving both high thrust and high specific impulse required extreme power levels. While traditional rocket designs see thrust increase linearly with velocity, the kinetic energy of exhaust rises with velocity squared. Therefore, increasing both thrust and specific impulse demands substantial power. To maintain such power, Orion detonated nuclear explosions externally, as internal detonations within a spacecraft would exceed the survivable limits of known materials and designs. This external detonation allowed for an extremely robust spacecraft. Uncrewed Orion craft could endure very high accelerations, potentially up to 100 g. However, human-crewed Orion missions required damping systems to mitigate the near-instantaneous acceleration to levels safe for human occupants, typically around 2 to 4 g. 
The key to Orion's high performance was its high exhaust velocity, which depended on the temperature change of the nuclear fireball. These fireballs reached temperatures exceeding 10 million degrees Celsius in less than a millisecond, resulting in very high velocities. To maintain efficiency, the design had to limit the destructive radius of the fireball, which was proportional to the bomb's explosive yield. Efficiency also hinged on the shape of the bomb's reaction mass. Tungsten was used for this purpose, and the bomb's geometry and materials were designed to focus X-rays and plasma from the nuclear explosion onto the reaction mass, effectively turning each bomb into a nuclear-shaped charge. Different bomb shapes resulted in varying plasma debris patterns. A cylindrical reaction mass created a flat, disc-shaped plasma wave, while a disc-shaped reaction mass produced a more efficient, cigar-shaped plasma wave. This cigar shape concentrated much of the plasma onto the pusher plate, improving mission efficiency. The maximum effective specific impulse of an Orion nuclear pulse drive was determined by the collimation factor, the velocity of the nuclear pulse unit plasma debris, and the standard acceleration of gravity. Achieving a collimation factor near 0.5 involved matching the diameter of the pusher plate to the diameter of the nuclear fireball. For optimal performance, the Orion drive used smaller bomb yields, typically around 0.15 kilotons, with approximately 800 bombs required to reach orbit and a pulse rate of roughly 1 per second. This configuration allowed for efficient propulsion with lower g-forces on the pusher plate and reduced the need for damping to smoothen acceleration. In George Dyson's book, Project Orion, The True Story of the Atomic Spaceship, Project Orion's design evolved from considering small 0.03 kiloton bombs, resulting in an 880-ton vehicle, to a 4,000-ton base design in the late 1950s to early 1959. Details of small bomb designs were highly classified, leading to the removal of bomb details from many design reports. A massive Super Orion design, weighing 8 million tons, was contemplated, potentially serving as an interstellar arc. This design was theoretically feasible with the materials and techniques available at the time. Project Orion's propulsion units consisted mainly of inert materials to transmit detonation force to the pusher plate and minimize fallout. Some designs proposed using the pusher plate as nuclear fuel in another star system. Orion was initially intended for interplanetary space flights, including single-stage missions to destinations like Mars and Saturn's moons. Freeman Dyson explored the possibility of reaching Alpha Centauri using Orion. He considered large nuclear explosions but shifted from fission bombs to deuterium fusion explosions. Theoretical speeds ranged from a few percent of the speed of light to 50 to 80 percent from matter-antimatter annihilation rockets, with deceleration options like magnetic sails. At 0.1 c, an Orion thermonuclear starship would require at least 44 years to reach Alpha Centauri. Carl Sagan suggested using nuclear weapons for such journeys. Project Orion also gave rise to proposals for a space battleship and space-based nuclear weapons platform called the USAF Deep Space Bombardment Force in the 1960s. Project Deadless, a concept by the British Interplanetary Society in the 1970s, aimed to create a robotic interstellar probe traveling at 12% of the speed of light to Barnard Star. Similarly, in 1989, the U.S. Navy and NASA explored a comparable concept called Project Longshot. These projects, unlike Orion, require significant advancements in fusion technology and are not currently feasible. From 1998 to the present, Pennsylvania State University's Nuclear Engineering Department has been working on improved versions of Project Orion known as Project Icon and Project AIM Star. These iterations utilize compact antimatter catalyzed nuclear pulse propulsion units instead of the large inertial confinement fusion systems proposed in Project Deadless and Longshot. Costs associated with Project Orion were mitigated by optimizing the design of explosives and using larger bombs for greater efficiency. Ted Taylor demonstrated that the amount of fissionable material used on launch remained relatively constant, even for different-sized Orion spacecraft. After initial development and investment, mass production costs for nuclear bombs could be relatively low. Project Deadless explored fusion explosives, specifically deuterium or tritium pellets detonated by electron beam inertial confinement, with potential for scaling down explosions and using shock absorbers. 
Orion's vehicle architecture involved nuclear explosives being detonated behind a pusher plate on the spacecraft, with the shock wave and radiation impacting the underside of the plate, propelling the vehicle. Two-stage shock absorbers smoothly transmitted acceleration. During takeoff, there were concerns about reflected shrapnel from the ground, leading to proposed solutions like using conventional explosives to lift the ship before the nuclear detonations. A preliminary design for a nuclear pulse unit was developed, employing shape charge fusion boosted fission explosives wrapped in beryllium oxide channel filler surrounded by a uranium radiation mirror. The unit was compact, weighing just over 300 pounds, and used a can with a diameter of no more than 6 inches. Film model flight tests were conducted in 1959, demonstrating the concept's feasibility. The shock absorbers evolved from a ring-shaped airbag to a two-stage mechanical and gas piston design to cope with bomb failures and ground launch requirements. The final design ensured that a failed explosion would overshoot and rebound into a central position, allowing for the use of lower-yield devices following a failure. Proposals for adjusting bomb yield and launching them behind the pusher plate were explored, and the chosen method involved a gas gun shooting the devices through a hole in the pusher plate. Exposure to repeated nuclear blasts in Project Orion raised concerns about the erosion of the pusher plate. Calculations and experiments indicated that an unprotected steel pusher plate would ablate less than one millimeter, and spraying it with oil prevented ablation entirely. The absorption spectra of carbon and hydrogen minimized heating, and the design temperature of the shockwave prevented the plate from melting or ablating due to ultraviolet light's opacity in most materials. An unresolved issue was whether the turbulence created by the combination of propellant and ablated pusher plate would significantly increase ablation. Modern simulation technology could potentially address this concern without empirical tests. Spalling, the potential release of shards of metal from the top of the pusher plate, was another concern. Alternative materials like plywood and fiberglass were considered for the surface layer to mitigate this risk. A potential problem arose if the conventional explosives in the nuclear bomb detonated, but the nuclear explosion did not ignite, as shrapnel could strike and damage the pusher plate. Conducting true engineering tests for the entire system was challenging due to the impracticality of performing thousands of nuclear explosions in one location. Pusher plate tests in nuclear fireballs and long-term tests in space were considered. Shock absorber designs could be tested on Earth using chemical explosives. A major unresolved issue for Earth launch was nuclear fallout. Estimates suggested each launch could cause between 0.1 and 1 fatal cancer from fallout, assuming a no-threshold model. The danger to human life was not a primary reason for shelving the project, which faced challenges like lack of a mission requirement, the focus on rockets for the moon mission, and the signing of the Partial Test Ban Treaty in 1963. An Orion launch would generate an electromagnetic pulse that could damage computers and satellites and flood the Van Allen belts with high-energy radiation. Launching from remote areas or using space-based electrodynamic tethers could mitigate this issue. Additionally, boosting an Orion spacecraft by non-nuclear means to a safer distance before activating its drive was considered, with potential solutions like the Lofstrom launch loop or a space elevator. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the fascinating history of Project Orion, a bold and ambitious concept that pushed the boundaries of space exploration. While it ultimately remained a concept due to various challenges and changing circumstances, it serves as a testament to the innovative spirit of scientific exploration. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about other groundbreaking projects and scientific discoveries, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. As we delve deeper into the realms of science and technology, we invite you to share your thoughts, questions, and ideas in the comments section below. Your curiosity fuels our quest for knowledge, and together, we'll continue to explore the wonders of the universe. This is Cybot GPT, signing off and remember, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning.